Hey, this is Chuck Dixon. I'm here to share with you some weird facts. Strange, trivial things you may not know. Like, did you know the Empire State Building has its own zip code? Did you know that Rip Torn's name is actually Rip Torn? It wasn't a Hollywood thing. Do you know that koalas have fingerprints indistinguishable from that of human children? Fruit Loops are all the same flavor. Hitler was once nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. And every crawl dad in Europe and Asia is a clone. That's probably the weirdest thing I've heard in a long time. Every crawl dad in Europe and Asia can be traced back to uh, a crawdad species native to Florida, where I live. And no one knows why. <laughs> well, what good are all these facts? I mean, other than impressing friends or uh, boring people at parties, what good are these facts? Well, if you're a writer, you, you have to have a collection of um, unique and unusual trivia in your head. Your, your brain has to be full of it. And you know, you have to know which ones to remember, which ones to forget, and which ones to write down so you don't forget. Uh, because the oddest little bit of, you know, uh, knowledge might come useful when you're writing, uh, if only to add verisimilitude to, to uh, what you've created. I mean... It, it, if you write mysteries, this kind of stuff is invaluable uh, because what is a mystery but a piece of information the reader doesn't know that you hide from them until the end, <laughs> you know, slowly revealing little bits and pieces of it. And knowing something like what I told you about koala's fingerprints, you, you can base a whole mystery around that. Have some, you know, Aussie uh, police detective flummoxed by what he finds <laughs> at the murder scene. Uh, and, you know, so you, you need to collect little facts like this and all the rest of it um, and store them away and store them away in notebooks or whatever. And, and you know, a lot of facts like this, I mean, oddball, weird things like this, you're, you're not going to learn in books. You're not going to learn on the Internet. And if you do, then everyone knows them. Everybody knows, oh, yeah, I knew that. I knew that weird thing. Uh, you got to find stuff that nobody else knows. Um, a lot of this comes from actually listening to people. I mean, if, if you're a mystery writer, uh, just to stay on that genre, I would suggest, you know, talking to as many cops as you could, or even more importantly, uh, listening to cops talk to each other. All kinds of stuff you can learn. Um, you know, stories they tell, the, the language they use. You know, because you don't want to learn everything from TV and from books. You, you want to learn stuff from real life. Now, historical stuff, I mean, w w what are you going to do? You know, you can't go back in time, but um, you can learn stuff. Like, you know, Napoleon was of average height. I always consider him to be short. Um, when mortar rounds land among infantry, they do not yell incoming. They yell something else, but it's not incoming. And you often read writers talking about the smell of cordite after guns have gone off. You know, the, the stink of cordite hanging in the air. Well, um, this is a writing cliche. And this is what I mean about not learning things from books. You've got to learn things from real life. Uh, cordite was a chemical used in the manufacture of gunpowder at the Dum Dum Arsenal in India during the Raj, the time of the British Raj. But it wasn't used after that. So unless... Your character is firing some really old bullets. Uh, there will be no stink of cordite in the air. Now, where do you learn trivial facts? Where do you learn weird things like this? I mean, experience. Experience. Um, if, if, if you go from high school to college and from college to writing, uh, big mistake. Um, I didn't go to college. I did a little community college. Uh, but mostly I worked donkey jobs, what I call donkey jobs, dead end jobs uh, that would allow me time to write. And 
allow my sort of my brain to be free <laughs> while I worked to to make stuff up. You know, I, I got very few jobs in the early part of my working career before I became a writer that were involved in anything creative. I mean, once in a while I get a storyboarding gig, once in a while I write a children's book. But for the most part, you know, I literally flipped burgers and drove an ice cream truck, worked as a security guard, worked as a janitor. Best job I ever had to prepare me for a writer was I worked a graveyard shift at a 7-Eleven, an urban 7-Eleven. And I learned, maybe I'll do a, a whole video about this down the line, but um, I learned more about the dark side of human nature working that job than uh, I think you could learn anywhere else in the world other than maybe uh, being a third shift cop in a bad neighborhood. Uh, just a lot of weird stuff happened. Uh, stuff that kind of beggared belief. Taught me a lot about the... Uh, more negative aspects of the human spirit, let's say. Um, you know, and you got to listen to people and you got to be willing to steal ideas and information from others. Uh, as Frederick Nietzsche said, and in my opinion, he said a lot of stupid things, but one, one smart thing he said was that a writer uses his own and his friend's intellect. So it's important to listen to people and listen to people who are interesting. I mean, hang around vets. You know, ask them questions. They won't answer them all. But like I said with the cops, hang around and listen. Listen to them talk to each other. Pick up their language and uh, hear what they have to say. I mean, I recently met a con man who told me all about what it was like to stay in a minimum security prison. And it was nothing like I had thought, nothing like the movies and TV present. Uh, he told me all the stuff that I could never have learned except from someone who had actually experienced it, who had actually been there. Um... Uh, I, I met someone who spent time in foster care, and uh, uh, this informed all of my writing in my Leave on Cade series that concerned foster care. And in, the, in you know, the most recent books have dealt quite a bit with foster care and what a messed up, snarled, you know, cluster bump all that is. And it's a ripe place to um, find... Uh, People for Levi to kill, basically. <laughs> so the more research you do in foster care, the less you'll, you know, less faith you'll have in humanity. Let's put it that way. Even worse than working overnights at a 7-Eleven. Um, so, yeah, listen to people. Listen to people when they talk. And they'll tell you stuff you can't learn anywhere else. And you squirrel it away. You write it down. You squirrel it away. And someday you're going to need that. And it's going to add... Uh, a richness to your stories. Uh, it's going to add a believability. Uh, you know, it's like they always say, if you're telling a lie, include something, include an interesting tangent, sort of draw them, <laughs> draw the person you're lying to away from the truth. Uh, but you do that in fiction as well. You include, um, you know, details that surprise, delight, or appall the reader, like those cloned crawdads. I didn't make that up, by the way. <laughs> That's for real. Look it up. Look it all up. And um, hey, if you like this video, if you like unauthorized TV and the absolute freedom you have here and I have here to share ideas, share knowledge, then why not tell a friend? Tell a friend about unauthorized TV. Tell them about all the great channels here and especially tell them about my channel. You probably know a comic book geek. Uh, or someone who's interested in writing who would, you know, enjoy or benefit from these videos. And uh, if you share them, it builds the channel, it, it, it builds uh, my audience, and it helps me out a whole bunch. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And I will see you all down the road.